Saturday morning, Saturday morning. Welcome, good people. Episode 56, the Dome Podcast, man. Hope you guys are having a great morning. Look, sitting back chilling. I got the pimple butterfly on right now in the, in the background, just vibing to some Kendrick, man. And I was thinking uh, a lot of comparisons over the last few years on uh, Twitter about 50 Cent and Lil Wayne. So today I thought I'd talk about, man, their albums, mixtapes, and the legacy of both of these guys, man, because they're, they're compared a lot. You know what I'm saying? And uh, you got regional situation where some people think 50 Cent is better. Some people think Lil Wayne is better. If you speak to some people maybe in New York, they'll, they'll, they'll ride with 50 Cent. If you speak to people in the South, they'll ride with Lil Wayne. If you speak to people all over, that's a good discussion because – uh, 50 Cent just went on a world tour, man. And he's still one of the biggest stars in hip hop history. You know what I'm saying? All foreign countries, man, selling out stadiums and everything like that. And I think in that regard, globally, you know what I'm saying? He's probably bigger than Lil Wayne on that global scale as far as concerts. You know what I'm saying? But is he bigger globally the way critics look at it? The way, um, you know what I'm saying? Uh, just the average fans maybe in the, in the States. How do, how do people in the States look at 50 Cent and Lil Wayne? How do they look at their discographies and music and impact and influence on the culture? There's a lot of things to, to dissect because they both have a different type of influence. You know what I'm saying? Because on one end, you can say Lil Wayne influenced this last 15 years of hip-hop. You know what I'm saying? And then you can say 50 Cent with the mixtapes kind of ushered in how people start looking at mixtapes like albums, you know what I'm saying, how that set people's careers up and, and things of that nature, and then the, the impact of Get Rich or Die Trying, you know, stuff like that. So it's a lot it's a lot to dissect. First things first, 50 Cent is 48 years old, same age I am. I'll be 49 this summer, 50 next year. So not a young book in this. Um, funny, young book, G Unit. Lil Wayne is 41 years old. And – what Lil Wayne has done in for in his 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 adult life and child life as far as music is pretty amazing as well. So at one point I was gonna say let's go album for album, but we can't do that because 50 Cent has like six albums, and seven of you include Power of the Dollar, and Lil Wayne has 13 albums. 50 Cent has two collab albums, Lil Wayne has two collab albums, and then we get to the mixtapes. So what I was thinking about doing is say, hey, just for the fun of this first part of the uh of the, of the podcast, we'll talk about his six albums versus six of Lil Wayne albums, maybe. Let's kind of see how that go. You know what I'm saying? So what I was looking at, for example, was I, I consider Power of the Dollar. It is an album. You know what I'm saying? At first, I think some of the songs that ended up leaking and it was going to be like an EP or something like that. They talked about some rumors about that. But Power of the Dollar is an album that shelved. Dope album. You know what I'm saying? So we would say Power of the Dollar versus the I'm, cause I'm gonna use a card of series. There's like five card albums, you know what I'm saying? And then we can use uh, some other Lil Wayne albums, but Power of the Dollar versus the card of one. Now, that's interesting because, again, it depends on me personally. I, I'll go with Power of the Dollar because my style of rap in that regard, uh, I lean towards 50 on, 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 on that comparison. I love Power of the Dollar. Obviously, man, one of my favorite 50 Cent songs is Ghetto Quran. You know what I'm saying? So, and of course, that's the song that rumor was when they hit the streaks, it just kind of made that hit that was going to be on him move faster. Now, that there's a lot of rumors from people in New York and Queens and stuff like that, Southside, about that song. He did name people in the song. Some people call that some dry snitching. We know fit the real one that he was in the streets for real. So he was naming the people because he didn't care. You know what I'm saying? Because he is one of those rappers that really was was in that life. So I don't think that was, it was no kind of snitching. No, he was just speaking facts on people from his hood. You know what I'm saying? So, but I lean towards that um, power of the dollar, you know, to over, over Carter One, even though Carter One is hot. You know what I'm saying? I really like Carter One, the singles, the, the I like the production. I mean, I, I think it's dope, but I just lean towards the style that 50 Cent was displaying on, on uh, power of the dollar. You know what I'm saying? Uh, looking at, obviously, Get Rich or Die Tron versus the Carter Two. I mean, Gary's not trying to a juggernaut album. You know what I'm saying? In the sense of it's the biggest album for a debut artist on the mainstream level since Snoop, 10 years before that. Because Get Rich is 2003. The Dog Style was 2000, was 1993, excuse me. And I think they both sold over 800,000 
in the first week. It went on to sell millions of records. 50 Cent ended up selling, I think, over 10, 11 million records with Get Rich Die Trying. So impact-wise, me going to the record store and buying Get Rich Die Trying, literally outside the store, people were driving around. You couldn't go anywhere without hearing it. If you was in any kind of hood on that release day and days after that, the impact is legendary. One of the probably top two or three biggest impacts from an album release in hip hop history. You can look at Wu Tang Forever, uh, Midnight Sale when it dropped, or Biggie's Life After Death when it dropped, and even Puff No Way Out album when it dropped. Outside of that, man, not too many releases were bigger than those albums. But the Chronic was a big release, you know what I'm saying, and stuff like that. But what 50 did was incredible. I probably listen to the Carter 2 now more. You know what I'm saying? I think the Carter 2 is Apex Little Wayne. From the intro, the songs, the styles, everything he did on um, on, on Carter Two to me showed peak Little Wayne. So I listened to Carter Two more than I listened to Get Rich or Die Trying in 2024. But the impact and everything, you're gonna have to get an edge to, to 50 Cent. You know what I'm saying? So I give that edge to 50 Cent, though I do listen to uh, the Carter Two more. Those interludes on the Carter Two in the intro and the outro of the album with that same beat. Rain is Wayne is killing. He, he, he talking about making the finish line. You know what I'm saying? Like yo, he just every song on it, the Robin Thicke song, man, the the joint, man. Um, when he rhyming about meeting cats in uh on South Beach, and cat rocked up to him on the freestyle and battle him. He's like, dude, I, I ain't doing that. Get these cameras off me. And then that, that song came in or whatever. Yeah, man, it, it it was. Then he had like shooter on that. I believe that's the one with Thicke. I believe. Um, Man, I just really love that album, man. Uh, he got that song with a dog pound on there. Yeah, very dope album. I think that both of those albums are, you know, classics in their own rights. You know what I'm saying? You guys know I don't use those words lightly. Now, this next one interesting because unlike a lot of people in, in, um, in 50 Cent Decipher, I love The Massacre. I like In My Hood. I like Ski Mask Way, Baltimore Love Thing, God Gave Me Style. Uh, I thought it was real introspective, man. Ride of music. I'm gonna tell you, if you take off, I didn't like Piggy Bank. It was kind of funny, I guess. You take off that. It was a candy shop on there. I'm not sure candy shop on there, but a few. It was a few commercial drunks on there. He was reaching again, and because you know he had that success with 21 Questions and stuff like that on Get Rich, but there was a few songs on on, on Massacre that were terrible. But the good ones, if if the Massacre was cut down to me to 14 songs. It would have been incredible. Now, of course, it was a commercial success, you know, eight, nine million copies, whatever. But that's going up against the Carter Three. And the Carter Three is commercial Apex Little Wayne. The Millie is the biggest song of that, probably that summer. You know what I'm saying? And uh, all the singles on, uh, even Lollipop was huge. All the singles was huge. The sequence of the song was huge. I like to join with Fab and, and, and Ju Jewel's on there. It's just a very dope album. Got to give Lil Wayne the edge. I was on Carter 3. Um, I listen to the tracks on the massacre more than I listen to Carter 3. Um, so right now we have that like 2 1 uh, 50. But then you're going down to the uh, before I set the well, Curtis album and um, Carter 4. Which one you like? I think they're almost even. I think Curtis album is, is, is all right though. You know what I'm saying? I think it's not a bad album. Couple of good, couple of good songs on there. A couple of cringeworthy songs on there. But I think I might give that edge to the Carter Four. You know, what I'm saying I do like what Tech Nine did, Andre Three Thousand, Nas and all them did on the Carter Four. I like the way he his guest appearances were still on Carter Four. I, 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 it surprised me. Carter Four is a little better than I thought it was. So I'm gonna give Carter Four the edge of Curtis, man. Um, before I self destruct in, in Carter Five, some people really like before I self destruct. You know, what I'm saying. Carter Five was okay, you know, you know, you know what I'm saying. There was some joints on there. I probably listened before I said the stroke over Carter Five though, but uh, personally, but I think the masses would probably pick Carter Five over that before I said the stroke. Now the int interesting thing is uh, Animal Instinct, 2014, 50K Mac again. I liked it. I was I was hoping that he was gonna drop that other album that, that was being rumored. Uh, the name escapes me right now, but 50 did have a. Uh, the Street Kings or something like that. He had some other album he's supposed to be working on. And I want to say a few songs end up leaking, but it never came out. But we did get, I think, that uh, Animal uh, animal Instinct. 
you can put that against which one of Lil Wayne albums because again, you're talking about five albums versus 13 albums. Um, they got the block is hot, you got 500 degrees, you got lights out. So, just based on the multitude of albums Lil Wayne has, I, I would give that to Lil Wayne regardless. You just have you pick one and then the block is hot, it's dope, you know what I'm saying? So, I think when it comes to albums, now we're talking about quality. We can pick. We got thirteen to pick from from Lil Wayne versus the six from Fifty Cent. They all got the collab albums. Uh, Fifty has Big for Mercy, G Unit album. That's probably considered a classic to a lot of Fifty Cent fans. And then Lil Wayne um, has like Father Like Son with, with Birdman. Then G Unit the second album, um, Terminate on Sight versus uh, the uh, Welcome to College Grove uh, with um, Two Chains. I give I'll give Fit and G Unit you know, those edge on both of those personally. You know what I'm saying? So I really think when I look at it like that, my preference I like both discographies kind of close to the same when it comes to the albums. You know what I'm saying? Even though Wayne had more to choose from, there's a few little Wayne albums I don't love, but the ones I really love, like the Carter two, three, and four, those are some stellar albums from Lil Wayne, man. And uh, quality wise, I would put them against uh, Fifty Cent. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so that that's interesting. Like like, who do you think? Has the best albums. You could pick the top three albums from each person. You know, I think that would be interesting because again, this is really a situation of two juggernauts from two different regions. And I know people don't want to say regions matter, but they do matter because some kids in New Orleans or some kids in Florida and stuff like that. If you ask them who the best rapper alive uh, between Fifty Cent and Lil Wayne, a lot of them gonna say Lil Wayne. You know what I'm saying? Like that's just the truth. A lot of people in in, in Georgia and you, you, you know, up Mississippi and New Orleans, uh, Louisiana, all this stuff down here. A lot of the people gonna say they like Lil Wayne albums better than 50 Cent albums. A lot of people down here gonna say Carter 2 is better than any 50 Cent album. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people down here gonna say Carter 3 is better than any 50 Cent album. Now, there are some hip hop heads in the South also who not stuck on region that is just based on what they think is dope. And, and, and the region don't necessarily influence them like that. They might say 50 Cent albums are better. You know what I'm saying? But I would think that, you know, down here, Lil Wayne's going to dominate 50 Cent in terms of all his music. Like, if they had a versus and it was down south, Lil Wayne going to win. You know what I'm saying? Just like they had a versus in New York, 50 Cent going to win. You know what I'm saying? So probably most people in the New York area is going to pick uh, maybe Get Rich or Die Tron over any Lil Wayne album. And I would understand that. You know what I'm saying? And again, down here, they might pick Carter 2 or 3 over any 50 Cent album. So they are polarizing figures in their own region and in hip-hop history. I like to hear somebody from the West Coast uh, let me know what they think about comparing uh, maybe the top five albums from 50 Cent versus the top five albums of Lil Wayne. I like to hear somebody from even Canada and in, in Europe, you know, and overseas who, who they think, you know what I'm saying? Like, because saying the South and the North, we already know how, how that's going to go, you know what I'm saying? In most cases, I'm in North Carolina, so I'm kind of caught in the middle, you know what I'm saying? Uh, as an MC who I listen to more now, I probably listen to Lil Wayne more now in 2024. But if I pick, if I had to pick 15 songs from 50 and 15 songs from Lil Wayne, uh, as far as the greatest hits in my car riding, I'd pick 50 Cent because I'm probably going to like the production a little bit better. You know what I'm saying? Personally, I think both of them are LMCs in their own right, but I would probably pick 50 Cent, especially several songs from uh, Power of the Dollar, you know what I'm saying, and several songs from The Massacre. Because believe it or not, I like. If I took the 10 best songs on the massacre and the 10 best songs on Get Richard Dotron, I like the 10 best songs on the massacre better. You know what I'm saying? Now, obviously, Get Richard Dotron is a better album than the massacre, but the highs on the massacre for me are better than the, the, the highs on um, uh, on Get Richard Dotron, personally. That's just what I think. You know what I'm saying? So, I might have put that in a tweet uh, with this video also about the, my favorite songs on Get Richard Dotron and the massacre. And I tell you, if I release 10 and 10, you might be surprised how close they are when you when you just step away from the uh the reputation of the albums. You, you might be surprised. Same but with the Carter Two and Carter Three. Carter Three is Lil Wayne's biggest album. If I put the ten best songs from uh Carter Two and the big ten best songs from Carter Three, I think Carter Two is better. You know what I'm saying? And uh, I think it's more lyrical. I think when Wayne reached his commercial peak, like I said a few minutes ago, on three. Now let's talk about this mix mixtape world. Some will surmise that 50 Cent kind of grew the mixtape uh, landscape. You know what I'm saying? When he when he released, what, well, Guess Who's Back? Guess Who's Back is like an album. You know what I'm saying? Guess Who's Back is one of the greatest mixtapes of all time. Now, we know other people had great mixtapes. 
outside of 50 Cent and Lil Wayne. We know Young Jeezy had a, a, a mixtape run. We know J. Cole had mixtapes. We know like um, Joe Button had the mood music mixtapes. We know, uh, man, a lot of people, you know, end up having very dope mixtapes. And, and, and that could be a discussion about who has the greatest mixtapes all time, like a top 10 list or whatever you guys can, can name that. Maybe we'll, we'll talk about that at some point online or in another episode. But 50 Cent having uh, Guess Who's Back and 50 Cent's The Future, it blew him up in New York. I mean, you're talking about someone who built a name without having an album because Power of the Dollar, you know, of course, was, was shell. But um, in the streets of New York and people I know and family I knew up there at the time, they're like, yeah, think 50 Cent is hot. You know what I'm saying? So as a matter of fact, when JD spit back at him on uh, Volume 3, I went about a dollar who the 50 Cent, I, he didn't have an album out. He had mixtapes. You know what I'm saying? He had Jay-Z at the time, Volume 3, Jay-Z, after Hard Not Life, you talking about the biggest rapper, you know what I'm saying, probably in the culture outside of Eminem at the time in DMX, of course. But hit that at, because 50 at the time had that, why don't you be a gentleman? He had a, you be a gentleman when he was dissing cats. How to Rob had that, and he had other joints too. You know what I'm saying? I think he had that nobody likes me to end up being on the album. But then, nevertheless, Fifty's mixtape reign is massive because obviously Eminem hears these mixtapes, and the rest is history. Eminem's a fan of Fifty Cent. Hears these mixtapes. Eminem studies the game, the craft, and you know, you know, they fly uh, Fifty Cent. I think in Tony Ayo out there, and they meet. M and Dre, and look what happened. You have this whole tree of entertainment that Fitness in has done as a result of, of Eminem and Dr. Dre, which we, you know, me and uh, my guy Vague talked about 1999 hip hop on last episode. And if Eminem and the crime 2001, Dr. Dre don't pop off, maybe there's no real aftermath after that. And there's no 50 Cent, but nevertheless, that's a good episode. Check it out, man. I hope you guys like it. You check it out. But 50 Cent dropping, guess who's back. And we are, and, and, and what, 50 Cent is the future? Crazy. And then, at the same time, but let's just look at 50 Cent. Yeah, it's 10 mixtapes, 10 plus mixtapes. So you have Guess Who's Back, 50 Cent is the Future, No Mercy, God's Plan, Bulletproof, and I think two or three of them all dropped in 2002. I mean, he was on fire, just rapid mixtapes, and then some of them started spreading out throughout his career, like uh, War Angel, later Forever King, The Big Ten, and uh, lost tapes and all that. So he ended up having, like, like I said, 10, 11 mixtapes, whatever. But that the core was started the first two, three years of his career. And he was on fire. Now, Lil Wayne, 29 mixtapes, y'all. Probably the most extensive mixtape catalog in hip hop history. Okay. We're talking about the Dedication series. It's like six of them. The Dedication series is awesome. You know what I'm saying? Dedication one and two. Shh. Wayne was spitting, and I don't care what region you're from, where you're from, go back and listen to Dedication 1 and 2. You know what I'm saying? Lil Wayne killed them joints. You had the Drop Series. You know what I'm saying? You had the uh, SQ. You had uh, No Ceiling Series. You know, he had about seven, eight, like, EPs, you know, mixtape type joints also. I mean, Lil Wayne got over 30-some projects that aren't his albums, and he already has 13 albums. So if you're a Lil Wayne fan, he provided you with one of the deepest discographies. Because I, when I say discographies, I'm talking about albums, mixtapes, EPs, singles, everything music related. If you consider that, Lil Wayne got one of the biggest discographies in hip-hop history. Probably the top five as far as volume in hip-hop history. And if you're a fan of Lil Wayne and Hot Boys and Young Money and, uh, and all of that, he gave you everything. Like Lil Wayne doesn't have to ever release another song again, because not only did he do that with albums with ten, with, with thirteen albums and twenty nine plus mixtapes, but he does collaborative joints. And he had a time period in like two thousand seven, eight, nine, where he actually was on more features than probably anybody in rap history. So comparing him to Fifty Cent in terms of volume is not even fair. If you want to say quality or you prefer 50 Cent or you think 50 Cent is a dope MC, that's another whole debate. Well, we can debate that in here too. But volume, when I look back at it, because I was thinking about let's, let's do 50 Cent versus Lil Wayne uh, discography. You really can't. Unless I'm going to exclude a lot of Lil Wayne joint and just pick my favorite five, six, seven projects against 50 Cent. And then mixtapes, I, I picked 10 
of Lil Wayne versus the 10 from 50 Cent. But I can pick most of the dedication joints. I can pick three or four of the dedication joints. I can pick some of the drought joints, you know what I'm saying, and match that up with 50 Cent. Now, but depending on flavor again, just like the albums, well, do you prefer 50 Cent mixtape discography or Lil Wayne mixtape discography? I'm caught in the middle because I like I like the early mixtapes from 50 Cent. So I might like Guess Who's Back is my favorite 50 Cent mixtape, and maybe that Dedication One, my favorite Lil Wayne mixtape. I can compare those two. I think that I probably like 50 Cent Guess Who's Back mixtape more than any Lil Wayne mixtape. But overall, I think Lil Wayne got better mixtapes than 50 Cent. I do like 50 Cent of the Future. And I do like God's Plan. I, I, I like a lot of 50 Cent mixtapes. But I think Lil Wayne, because of the volume, I can pick more mixtapes to go against 50s. And I think that they're overall better because it's just, it's just so much volume for me to pick from. Uh, I'll give Lil Wayne the edge with the uh, with the mixtapes, you know what I'm saying, overall. Now, I know that the impact of, of, of 50 Cent's first two mixtapes is probably bigger than the impact of a lot of Lil Wayne's. But I, I really can't say that, too, because Lil Wayne, at some point, 50 Cent died down with the mixtapes. Lil Wayne took that and went to another level with volume. Uh, with the way he was doing it, the way they was releasing those mixtapes, it was just something different. So he did kind of change the game in his own way, too. So they both kind of changed the game with mixtapes in their own way. Now, looking at legacy again, let's go back to me saying 50 Cent's they're one of the biggest stars in hip-hop. Celebrity in hip-hop. Same as Lil Wayne. But if you're doing an all-time greatest MCs list, now, when, when Lil Wayne started talking about Grace Rap Alive, a lot of people started looking at it like, wow, he, he is up there. In New York, for example, and on the East Coast, serious question. How many of you guys have ever said 50 Cent was the greatest rapper of all time? How many of you guys have ever said 50 Cent was a top 10 MC of all time? Top 15, top 20 MC of all time? Because I haven't heard, and I know a lot of guys from New York, they got podcasts who got big uh, platforms on, on, on IG and on uh, Twitter and everything like that. I don't remember any of these guys ever saying 50 Cent was a GOAT, the GOAT MC or a top five MC or even a top five MC in New York. Do some of y'all even think he's a top five MC in Queens? I ain't talking about success now. I ain't talking about reputation now. I'm talking about body, body albums and rapping skills. How many people on the East Coast think 50 Cent is the greatest rapper of all time? Okay, now let's talk about the South. Because I know a lot of people with platforms from the South that think Lil Wayne is the greatest rapper of all time. I know people from the South who think Lil Wayne is top five MC of all time. I know people from the South that think Lil Wayne is top 15, top 20 MC of all time. I've heard people in the South and the West say, Compare Lil Wayne to Jay Z, Nas, any of them. I know putting them to say, man, he did show you what you got better than Jay Z did. He better than Jay Z. And they did serious. They're not just saying it online, some hyperbole. Or no, there's people who think Lil Wayne is the greatest rapper of all time. Now, how many people think Lil, I mean, 50 Cent is the greatest rapper of all time? I've only seen like one person ever on Twitter say, look, 50 Cent was the greatest rapper of all time. And I love 50 Cent. And again, this is the same person who said, if I took the best 20 songs from 50 Cent and the best 20 songs from Lil Wayne, I would ride to, to the 50 Cent songs probably more. And I'm in North Carolina. This ain't the deep south, but it is the south. We're in that Mason Dixon, baby. So I am from the south. And I always represent the south in my tweets and on Twitter and on social media. Even though now's my favorite MC and Tribe my favorite group, I think Outkast is the greatest group of all time. And, and I also represent the south to the fullest. But I represent hip hop to the fullest because I try not to have this kind of crazy bias. My dog acting up right here right now. Excuse me. But yeah, those questions are legit questions. I like to know that. Because I don't think anyone ever came from that perspective in a conversation or a podcast. So I I ask again, how many people from the East Coast think look uh 50 Cent is the greatest MC of all time? Or a top 10, top 50, top 20. Because plenty of people down south think Lil Wayne is either the greatest or top five, top 10, top 15, top 20. West Coast people, again, give me your thoughts on 
on uh, where you think that 50 Cent uh, ranking the greatest of all time, where you think Lil Wayne ranked in the greatest of all time. I'm interested to know people on the West Coast, like again, not to exclude Canada and, and, and Europe and other places that love hip hop. Yeah, if you follow me, yeah, give me your give me your ideas, give me your thoughts on that. I think that's an interesting thing. Also, do you prefer Lil Wayne albums versus 50 Cent albums? Do you prefer Lil Wayne mixtapes versus 50 Cent mixtapes? Now, if I, I did a top 20 on the Dome Pod, uh, not the Dome Podcast, excuse me, that's this, on uh, uh, into the Dome.com website years ago. And I did, a, I refreshed it again, I want to say um, a couple of months ago when I moved Nas to Bud Rock Hill. Um, but I'll have Lil Wayne between like 12 and, 12 and 18, I thought. And I had 50 Cent in my top 25, I believe. So I have Lil Wayne ranked all time higher than 50 Cent. As an overall artist MC in my top 25 greatest MCs of all time, I do have Lil Wayne ranked high. I'm not saying Lil Wayne can rap better. I'm not saying 50 Cent can rap better. But as their body of work and their music, I have Lil Wayne up there. Some people got Lil Wayne even higher. And I believe if you look at a lot of greatest MCs top 25 lists from big publications or podcasts or platforms though i think you'll see lil wayne name went higher more than you'll see 50 cent name you know what i'm saying but again let me know your thoughts on that man happy saturday uh episode 56 didn't want to hold you too long we we up on the 30 minutes man you know what i'm saying because i know people got things to do you know what i'm saying but anyway man let me know your thoughts man peace and blessings and thanks again for supporting the dome man and, and supporting um the, the uh the website, you guys still going on. I see you guys still reading some of my old throwback um, articles, man. I got them all, all kind, man, real quick. From th old throwbacks, man, to Shaka Khan, Madonna, Tammy Terrell, Phil Collins, Kendrick Lamar, Jay-Z, Nas, Outkast, Tina Turner. You know what I'm saying? You name them, man. They, they, it's on the Nipsey Hussle joint that people still really like. The Tammy Terrell joint is still the most viewed. Second, no, as the second is Men in Ripperton, man. So I still got all them old joints that's on there. I don't write too much anymore at the time, but I have so much years worth of writing this on there that people are still finding and, and inboxing me about saying they read, man. So thanks for that. Thanks for the, 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 the subscribers, man. Still trying to build the podcast, man. Shout out to that. Uh, and yeah, shout out to everybody I rock with, man. Blessings.